In this video, I'm going to go over some options and views in iTunes. Uh, we're currently, I think, in iTunes 12 something. To make it uh, a little more usable, a little more relevant for Radiologic, I prefer the playlist view in order to see things. Uh, but even in this view, they often want to show you by default uh, certain views that don't show you too much. So we'll go over a few things here. One, in the view menu, I want to hide my iCloud music purchases because I really can't play those uh, unless I download them. So I'm going to hide those from what I have. Uh, just in the music view here itself in the library, I'm going to pick the songs view, which is more like the old iTunes view, and I'm going to choose to show my genres and albums and artists and that sort of thing so you can drill down through those as you see fit. This gives you more of a view, but even still here you can't always see how many tracks and how much time. Uh, the status bar is off by default, so we'll go up here and turn on the status bar. Ooh, that's much better information. I like information. Um, and every playlist likes to have a view something like this, and I'd rather see more of my tracks in here and be able to customize my columns as I see fit. So I change to the songs view, and from that I can decide what columns I want to see. And there are lots of columns to choose from there. So that's how I like to have it viewed so it's actually usable. By the way, you can turn on... Uh, for one of these big playlists, you can turn on the uh, the extra columns as well. The column browser can even be turned on per playlist, which is kind of nice. Might be useful in some cases. Let's go over some of the preferences. Uh, we'll start with general. Uh, not too much you have to worry about here. I have show Apple Music. I have that off. Um, sound check, you might want to have that on if you want the tracks normalized, uh, whether you're doing it with just iTunes or uh, with iVolume to make it a little more accurate. Radiologic DJ will respect that normalization of tracks. Uh, let's skip over to advanced. Uh, here I like to have uh, iTunes uh, actually change the file names. Uh, according to what I change in iTunes. If I change a title or an album or an artist or something like that, uh, I would have liked the, those changes to be reflected in the file names and locations, so that's why I have that on. Uh, down here, this is kind of your option, uh, copy files to the iTunes media folder when adding to the library. Well, if you have a track on the desktop and you go to put it in iTunes, you're going to make a copy of it into the iTunes folder. Normally, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'd rather just keep one copy. We don't need duplicate copies of things, so I will normally have this off. And if I really do want things in the iTunes media folder, then I will very purposely do that uh, by going in the uh, your home folder, uh, the music folder, and I have custom locations here, but basically your music folder and then whatever your uh, iTunes folder is. In this case, we're using... Uh, Modern Mix is the name of my iTunes library in this case. iTunes Media, and there's an automatically add to iTunes folder that you have here. I found this so useful that uh, for one of my other libraries, my main library, I actually put an automatically add to iTunes folder right up here in the uh, toolbar for easy access. So, so those are some of the basic options that uh, make this a little more usable so you can actually drill down and look at things a little bit better in, in iTunes. Uh, that's, those are the only things I can think of at the moment that, uh, that help you uh, view things a little bit better. You see how many tracks you actually have in your playlist, how much time it takes up, even how much space, etc. These are all nice things to have. A couple other things I'd like to show in iTunes. You can have multiple iTunes libraries. I'm going to quit iTunes, and then when launching it, I'm going to hold the Option key, and I get Choose iTunes Library. Well, if you have multiple libraries already, you could go and choose your library. Otherwise, you can create a new one and uh, locate it somewhere. But I'm going to choose a different library, and I have some favorites here. I'm going to go to an old-time radio library and switch to that. And this has a whole different set of tracks in it. Uh, I just have so many tracks 
of different genres of music, etc., that I have to have multiple libraries for different purposes. So, another thing I want to show is with newly created iTunes libraries, uh, Apple has off by default sharing the XML data about the library with other programs. And so you will find in DJ, you'll get a message like this. And it tells you exactly what to do, so it isn't a big deal. Also, if we were to launch Scheduler, and uh, I were to put down a new command here, uh, we have no playlists. We're not getting any playlists because we need to get those from the XML file. So let me quit these, and I'll show you where that's done. In iTunes, Preferences, go to the Advanced, and select to share the iTunes XML library with other applications. And what it should do is share that with, um, uh, actually write a, an XML file. In my case, it's going to be in here. It should write out the iTunes library XML file. And now when we, I didn't completely quit DJ there. Now when we launch DJ, we should get uh, no error message anymore. We can see the playlists that are here, and the same should go for Scheduler as well. Um, go over to the script line to test that, and we should see that the playlists are there. So that's how that's done.